Covering Los Altos, Antioch, Petaluma, and all the Bay Area. This is ABC7 News. And that's when the tiger went to his jugular and finished. He died right there. A tiger at the San Francisco Zoo killed his son in 2007, and now Carlos Souza is shocked to hear new questions about safety measures at the zoo. After that attack, the zoo installed a code red siren system to warn workers and the public of another dangerous animal escapes. But zoo employees are coming forward tonight to say code red is not working the way it should. Dan Noyes is here now with an investigation you'll see only on ABC 7 News. Dan. Well, Dan and Carolyn, our investigation began with this letter. It's unsigned from someone describing themselves as a friend of zoo workers who is concerned about their safety. Then we filed a Public Records Act request and received internal zoo documents that show problems in the code red system. These employees of the San Francisco Zoo are taking an extraordinary step, going on camera to say safety at the zoo could be better, that it should be better. They have seen firsthand this can be a life or death issue. I went home at the end of the day with chunks of meat and blood in my hair on me. Corey Hallman watched a tiger mangle his co-worker's arm. She survived and still works at the zoo. Wesley Hogue was there one year later, Christmas Day, when the same tiger, Tatiana, leapt from her grotto and killed 17-year-old Carlos Souza Jr. There were reports never proven the Souza's two friends had taunted the tiger. Um, shot fired. Everyone stand, stand back, stand back. Police shot and killed the 350-pound cat. I saw Tatiana almost every day I would go by before I left. It was such a beautiful cat. And for this to happen, it was devastating. In response to the mauling, the zoo spent more than $27,000 on a code red alert system with personal panic buttons for keepers working with the most dangerous animals, horns to broadcast a warning tone and a message telling visitors to find shelter, and a computer system that automatically called the police but keepers sometimes trigger the alarm by accident. They never gave us any kind of protective case or gear to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. So many of the employees um, got creative and took bottle caps and duct taped them over it. After some of the buttons suffered water damage, the zoo, without consulting the workers' safety committee, decided to mount all the alarm buttons on the wall. The animal keepers union rep calls that a mistake. If you're being mauled by a tiger, you can't say, excuse me one second, I need to run over and push this button. Are you sure the code red system's working? Zoo director Tanya Peterson and her spokeswoman repeatedly denied our requests for an interview. So we caught up to her at the zoo last week to ask several important questions. Why put the buttons up on the wall instead of on the keeper's person? I mean, if I'm being attacked, it might be hard to reach the wall, right? Well, you know what, we did have a keeper um, unfortunately attacked by a tiger. And I understand. It was the buddy system and another person there, so we feel that the buddy system is actually a more important offensive um, process for safety. She told me the buddy system and radios are most important to keeping workers safe. Peterson and her team have altered the code red system, cutting the automatic notification to San Francisco police and removing the verbal message. The alarm just sounds like this now. Is it important to have the buttons working though for you? Don't the buttons are a secondary system. It's a public alarm system. We actually are concerned that they create mayhem. That worries zoo workers. They've lost confidence in Director Peterson and how she and her staff maintain the code red system. I walk through the zoo every day and it's always on my mind, okay, are, are we safe? Or could we be safer? I think that we should be a world-class leader in safety based on our past experience. The workers want a simple test, just like a fire drill. Push each of the 10 code red buttons and hear the alarm go off. The zoo refuses, instead testing parts of the system at different times and staging exercises like this one from December. I'm going to ask everyone to go in lockdown. He's approaching the front gate. He may be armed. Peterson devised a scenario in which a gunman is looking for his ex-wife, a zoo employee. She signals a staff member to push a code red button. In fact, why don't you hit the panic button for me? Therefore, I'm pushing the panic button. The alarm doesn't sound. Peterson tries again. If you just make someone uh, hit the panic button so everybody knows, I'm going to take these folks up and lock them down here. Again, nothing. 
more than five minutes pass until the head of IT struggles to manually sound the alarm. I was trying to do it manually, uh, manually now it's, it's going, but it's not sounding. The IT team found more problems with the Code Red system in the public records we obtained. 2011, system malfunctioned and sent out false alarm. 2012, recorded message on the speaker system was inaudible. 2013, test of panic buttons in Bears and administration outright failed. The button in Snow Leopards had no batteries and no wiring. It wasn't hooked up to the system. So one of my members who works at Snow Leopards thought for over two years if she were in trouble, she could push that button, it would work. And it didn't, it never worked. We took what we found to the Recreation and Parks Commission, which oversees the zoo. Frankly, my concerns as chair of the Joint Zoo Committee are really around the inability, frankly, of both sides to move beyond the rhetoric and get to, let's find some workable solutions. It comes to me every day, it's like a recorder. My memories come back. Carlos Sousa tells me after the tiger killed his son, he found some comfort knowing the zoo tried to be safer with the Code Red system. Now he wants them to get it right. I think they should, you know, keep make, fix that problem and make sure it works for all the employers so the employers are safe and the people that go to the zoo are safe. The zoo has just announced it's spending $170,000 on new radios that have a panic button that does not address how the public will be warned about a dangerous animal on the loose. And the zoo put out a statement late today. It says, in part, the zoo has full confidence in our safety procedures and has received full and complete certifications from all of our oversight organizations, including the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and the USDA. You can read the full text at abc7news.com. Dan Carolyn. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Absolutely.